Day eight, and it's all been a bit of a blur, but there's still plenty to keep us entertained. Lars von Trier rocked up into town today to talk about his new film, Melancholia, and cause all sorts of controversy at the press conference, while Jodie Foster talks to us about her beavers. No, I really wanted to be a Jew, and, I, and then I found out that I was really a Nazi, you know, uh, because my family was German, Hartmann, uh, which also gave me some pleasure. <laughs> so I'm kind of a, yeah. Sir? I, 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 what can I say? Um, I, I understand Hitler. But uh, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I think he did some wrong things. Yes, absolutely. But 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 I I, I can see him sitting in his, in his bunker in the end. <laughs> but I, there will come a point at the, at the end of this. There will come. I will. I will. No, I'm just saying that 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 uh, I understand. I, I think I understand the man. Uh, he's not what we, you, you would call a good guy. But I. Um, yeah, I, I understand much about him, and I sympathize with him a little bit, yes. Not, but come on, I, I'm not for the Second World War, and I'm not against Jews. Susanna Beer is. No, no not even Susanna Beer. Um, that was also a joke. I am, of course, uh, very much for Jews. No, not too much, because Israel is a pain in the ass. But uh, still... Um, how can I get out of this sentence? <laughs> by, uh, by another question. That was Lars von Trier. Now I saw the film this morning and I thought it was a really wonderful piece of high drama with strong images and fantastic music. I really got the sense that this was a film for women. Kirsten Dunst and Charlotte Gansberg play two sisters, Claire and Juliet. We see Kirsten Dunst return after a two-year hiatus, having suffered from depression herself. Her character, Juliet, also suffers from depression. And it's really interesting to see how she's drawn upon her own experiences and included them in the film. It makes for a wonderfully strong performance, and I have to say, without question, this is the best I've ever seen Kirsten Dunst. As with all Lars von Trier films, this is a difficult and challenging watch. And I really like the fact that he's decided to focus on something so Definite, which is the end of the world and actually this high drama situation really works to his advantage and, and the latter half of the film really sings I'm not sure if it will be a palm door contender or not I know in the press conference he stated how uneasy he felt about it and whether he'd made a rubbish film but there's one thing you can say about Lars is that it's always interesting right now we're off to talk to Jodie Foster about her beaver I'm sick the question is do you want to get better? Who are you? No, I'm the beaver, Walter. And I'm here to save your damn life. How are you finding your time in Cannes? Well, it's pretty great. I mean, I have been doing a lot of interviews, so it's not exactly like oh, it's a day at the beach. But look at this beautiful look, view. I mean, extraordinary. Incredible. It would be better if there were no people here. I know, I know. <laughs> it's quiet. You could just relax. Exactly. Um, the Beaver is it's an incredible film, actually, and, and look, probably it played a lot darker than I, than I expected it yes. to. It's quite challenging. What was it about the script that attracted you to the film? Well, I mean, it was a beautiful script, witty in some ways, funny. It has this absurd high concept, and yet I always saw it as a drama. So it allows you to find humor in this absurd concept, but also the delicateness of a family dynamic. And did you always intend to have Mel in, in, in main role? Well, Mel was my first choice, and um, I know a lot about him, so I know that he can do the humor side of it, but he also, he can do the light touch and the charm and all of that, but that he has a real intimate, complex, dramatic soul, and uh, that he would connect with this movie, he would connect with the struggle in the film. Yeah, it's a magnetic performance. I think so, too. This film was different for him because, uh, you know, he usually does films that are broader, that rely much more on his funnier side in some ways and and I think this was an opportunity to to really pull that down and to really go delicate and uh, I'm so glad that he embraced that and that he gave me what he gave me I mean yeah. it's, I'm just so grateful for his performance puppet is it's really just a prop what you're really looking at is the man behind it and his struggles and yet little by little by little the, the puppet really starts taking on a more human quality to it towards the end of the film 
And it's got a cracking British accent. It does. It's <laughs> definitely the incarnation of Ray Winstone, who Mel Gibson liked to call on the phone and uh, talk to about his accent. Oh, really? Yes. And what's up for you next after this? I have a film I'm doing with um, the director of District 9, Neil Blomkamp. Oh, exciting. And it's with Matt Damon. It's a sci-fi film. It's called Elysium. Thanks, Jodie. Now, the beaver played a lot darker than I expected, and even though it seems to be portrayed as a comedy, it's actually a story about one man's depression and how he deals with it. Mel Gibson in the title role is absolutely magnetic, and it's his small nuances and facial expressions that really stand out. Now, it didn't do particularly well in the US, so I'm quite intrigued to see how it will play when it's released in the UK later this year. So, join me tomorrow, where we'll be focusing on Pedro Amaldivar's offering, The Skin I Inhabit.